There he is. Hi, Chloe. Frederick, how are you? I'm fine, thank you, thank you. It was a little bit of uh, looking how everything works, but now it works. All right. Uh, so we'll start off with the live, for, um, the live Instagram for uh, Compress Sports. Um, I'll first introduce myself. I'm Frederick van Lierde. I'm almost 41 years old right now. Um, I'm with Compress Sports since 2011, so that makes it uh, almost 10 years in a row now. Um, let's say for me, uh, the most important uh, races in my life have been my victory, of course, in, in Hawaii, and then uh, my five victories in, in Nice, Ironman, France. Um, what is really important in life, of course, is family. So I'm, I'm married with Sophie since 2002. Uh, we have two boys together. Uh, Aaron is almost uh, 16 years old now, and uh, Simon is almost 13. So, and yes, in these difficult, uh, strange times, we're all doing fine. So that's, uh, that's really important. Your turn. Yeah, um, my name's Craig Alexander. I'm a good friend of Frederick's. Um, I've been with Compressed Sports since 2012. Uh, married to Nerida for 22 years next year. Three children. My oldest, Lucy, is... 15 in one week. Yeah. Uh, our son, Austin, is 11 in four days. And the baby, um, Lani, she turned seven about two weeks ago. So obviously I've uh, been around a long time. I will share my age like Frederick. I'm 47 in two months. <laughs> so I'm a very, very old man. Um, been doing the sports. I, I started doing triathlon when I was 20 or 21 years of age. So... Um, it's been quarter of a century now as a professional athlete for me and still very much love the sport. Was very lucky to win three times on the Big Island and also have a couple of 70.3 World Championship titles as well. So, um, yeah, it's been a long career and, and a lot of fun. Um, not only the race victories are awesome, but I think what's awesome are the friendships and the connections and the experiences you have. I think the sport is your greatest teacher and your greatest friend and it teaches you a lot. So uh, I feel very lucky to have had such a long career. Yeah, exactly. True, true. That's, that's how I feel. Uh, I feel the same, you know, it's, it's been a long time. Things have changed a lot since we began yeah. with, uh, with triathlon and now if you compare, but on the other hand, it's a, it's a great experience. You may, you meet plenty of people around the world and, uh, it's always nice to catch up now with people of uh, approximately the, the same generation, no? Because yeah. there's plenty, plenty of new people coming in, uh, in the game now, so uh, things change quickly. Absolutely. I think, uh, I think you and I met in St. Croix in 2006. Um, seven, seven, 2007, was, yeah. Was it 2007? So it was yeah. a long time ago, nearly 15 years ago. We had the same home state family, Jackie and Joel Holt. Yes. Um, what a great race that, for me, that was one of the special races. It was a race I saw on television in Australia. I knew the history of the race um, and watched, watched it, as I said, it, iconic. The, it had obviously the beast, the great climb. You <laughs> swim in the Caribbean Sea. Um, and I remember in 2007, yeah, we got picked up at the airport and Joel said to me, oh, we've got another athlete from Belgium staying, Frederick. That's when we met. Yeah. Now, was that the, was that the year you crashed and broke your no. wrist? That was, 2000, that was 2008. 2008. Yeah. So, um, yes, that was, a, that was an interesting year as well because I remember we were in the front group. You were in the group, Simon Lessing. I was there. I think it was, it was a very good race. It was a world-class race. And, yeah, for sure. Um, we went over the little technical section and I heard a little scream and I looked back and you were in the bushes. <laughs> <laughs> and then... After the race, J Jackie and Joel had taken you to the hospital and exactly. you had the, the cast on your arm and you had a long flight back to Europe the next day. Yeah, I was lucky. I got upgraded to first class, but still uh, <laughs> it, was, it, was not, it was not fun. Yeah, but yeah. I still remember 2007 was like the year when we celebrated, I guess, Lucy's first or second birthday, no? It was, it was her second birthday, yeah. So second, we, yeah. Her birthday was the first weekend in May, which is the same weekend as that great race. So, yeah, we used yeah. to have a birthday party every year. Exactly, um, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, very good, special memories. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And that race was special as well. I also, I always remember the start when you had to swim like a little island in front of the of the beach, in yeah. fact. And then you started off from from a little island. So it was really a great race. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was one of the. Uh, I mean, there's so many. Our, our sport has evolved into many great things, um, but we have great history as well. And that was one of the historic races that yeah. all the great athletes had raced at, and just such a um, such a great course. Yeah, you you started at that little island. You swam in the Caribbean. It was yeah. like swimming in an aquarium. The fish were incredible, and then the course was very hard, very hilly and windy. And, yeah. And the weather conditions, you know, it's it's yeah. like Hawaii. It's very humid, yeah. very even hotter, I think, sometimes. So it's really... Uh, yeah. I remember you were one of the first guys, or the only guys, uh, that that run with a belt with his, uh, with his little uh, goggles to uh, to wear some some liquids, yeah? Yeah, to, absolutely. To drink, I, to drink, yeah. I learned, I learned the hard way there at that race. I remember one year running past one of the aid stations... And it was being manned by the kids from the local school. Yeah. And I think as a joke, they were putting a little bit of rum in the Coke. For <laughs> I was very, I was like, Coke, I want Coke, I need Coke. And I was like, mm, this is not Coke, it was rum and no. Coke. <laughs> so the next year I, I took my own nutrition. Yeah, yeah, I see. But that was, uh, that was key, I think, in that race um, mm. to be really good hydra hydrated and... Um, yeah. Yeah, if you look at these days, there, there's not too many athletes running with a belt. Um, and then at that time, it was really uh, yeah, a good thing you did to, uh, to stay hydrated, even yeah, on think, a half distance. Yeah. yeah, I think a lot of the races, I mean, the sport has just changed. And I think the aid stations are better now, although the aid yeah. stations in the volunteers and the race in St. Croix, I think is still one of the best I've ever done. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I just think you, a lot of the races used to be very hilly and very hot they were very hard um, yeah and i think you just learned that there wasn't much room to make any mistakes um, no and that was a good mindset to take into races as you know into races like hawaii and abu dhabi and all those really tough races where not only are you racing very tough conditions you're racing the very best in the world as well so it's, it makes it equal uh, extra difficult exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah one of the questions that popped up was like uh if we did enjoy racing more in the beginning of our career or in the end of our career. So uh, what's your opinion on that one? That's a hard question. I think when yeah. you love the sport, you always love to race. Um, I know in the beginning of my career, it just felt like, it just felt like I was playing. I was just like a kid playing on a, on a bicycle in my neighborhood. The fun, it was so much fun. Yeah. And, and that's not to say it became less fun, but Again, like you can appreciate when it becomes your career and there's a bit more pressure and responsibilities that uh, I wouldn't say it's not fun, but it's just different. It's different mm -hmm. and very rewarding, but just different. I think early in your career, it's uh, you're so new, you're looking at your idols, you get to race some of your idols in some races. It's very special and it just feels like yeah, you just feel like you're that free kid riding your bike around your neighborhood. Um, yeah. And then if you're lucky and you win races and your career gets momentum and you become a professional, um, it comes with some responsibility and pressure. So it's fun, but, but different fun. And yeah. what, 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 what do you think? Yeah, I think uh, quite the same uh, answer because things just change in, in life. I remember like we were talking about 2007. You, you are my idol, you were my idol then, and it was like for me like a, a real excitement when you come out of the water with, with Craig Alexander, with Chris McCormack, doesn't matter, and then uh, you're, you're with, uh, with the good guys, and I think in your career you have like a couple of years where you really feel you grow to the top, then when you get there, of course, like you say, things change and the pressure is on, yeah. and, but it's also fun, but in a different way, and then... Yeah. Uh, like now, when you, you're uh, towards the end of your career, of course, then it's, it's again different because you're, you're really happy when you still are able to win a big race. But then mm. on the other hand, sometimes I feel like I'm in a group and half of the group, under, I don't know their names. And in the yeah. mind, it's like, what, what am I doing? Who's that? Who's that? So, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's different from... Uh, being with the stars than being with, with the youngsters who come up to, to beat you. So 
that's that's the change in the game i think De definitely the mentality yeah. changes and i think when you're young you're you're very motivated and, and that motivation is still there but it changes and yeah i just think things change life changes you know you yeah. the sport is still amazing but yeah your i guess your place in it changes a little bit and that exactly. definitely changes your your mindset yeah yeah, yeah. So and and for you, uh, I heard 2020 was was going to be your last year too, like me. No, uh, I've I've said that every year for five years okay. now. Though, so. <laughs> <laughs> I um, look, I still love the sport and I love to race. Um, yeah, it's there comes a time, as you know, when it's not your main priority anymore. Um, mm -hmm. I I train to stay in shape. I train because I love to train. I train because my daughter is a very good athlete and I like to, I like to train with her. So yeah. I, yeah, I get a lot of enjoyment with that. And as it happens, I, I'm still able to maybe for one or two months of the year getting good shape where I can race. Um, mm -hmm. But it's not, the, it's not the priority like it used to be. So, yeah, I mean, I had thought this year possibly could be the last year, but I thought, I thought that last year as well. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So you're not sure yet. No. Not. Not. Not sure. I. Yeah. yeah. And how about you? Yeah. For me, it's it's gonna be my last year. So I, I announced it since 2018, and uh, of course now with the coronavirus, many people are asking me, uh, why don't you still continue for one more year to be to have a like a really last year? Yeah. But in the end, I I planned it quite well to to start my. Um, new job in 2021 so as you know i'm in the army since quite a long time and yeah. um, now i got the opportunity to be um yeah like the manager of all the elite sports in the belgian army oh. but but for that i need to yeah follow an education to be officer so and that education starts in march 2021 so i don't have like really a choice left to to put another year on and in the end i think I don't know what's your opinion about that, but um, of course, if for me it would be my um, my full time job still in 2021, I think it will be difficult, harder in terms of sponsorship to find partners uh, because priority will will now be um, the the companies, the the brands, and not so much the sport. So I think uh, that there will be, of course, there will be sponsors and so on, but it will be harder, and especially for me. If you want to put on another year, or it's it's different than a than a younger athlete, I think so. I for me, 2020 will be my last year, and so I hope with the coronavirus now, if we get it under control, maybe I can still race in in August, September, um, mm. and October, and then do a couple of more races. So, uh, like like you, I don't have nothing to prove, but um, mm. still, you you want to race, so uh, that's that's what I feel. Yeah. Right now. yeah. Well, it's what you love to do, right? And yeah. I think, I think you've done you've done it well. I think it's nice to have a definite endpoint. And if yeah. you have you have a job, a nice job to go to, um, yeah. I just I, I think at some point you just have to say this is it because look, in a perfect world, we would do what we love to do forever. No, um, that's not possible. <laughs> it's it's not it's not possible. So I think it's it's good to say well. This is the end point, mm -hmm. and and things come up and happen. Um, we, you know, obviously <laughs> the situation with the coronavirus this year, nobody could have predicted. But no, you know, I always think whenever is my last race, um, there's going to be a sadness, but there should also be a happiness that you got to do what you love to do for so long, mm -hmm. and sooner or later the next race will be the last race and that's that's going to happen that's going yeah, to happen yeah sure sure but in like you told me in the ideal world that's also something i have in my head right now if i still race a couple in the end of this year right now yeah the 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 absolute uh, perfect world would be like you win and you say goodbye everyone and that's it but We'll see if it if it happens, yes or no. But that, that's something that plays really hard in my head right now as well. So we, I want to to end on a high, but that's also in the perfect world. It happens. It's, it's not always the case. Yeah, I think you know, if you end on a high, then there might be the temptation to come back and do one more. So um, you can tell me, no? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I, I look. I just think 
there's no perfect time to win. There's just an end. And yeah. hopefully you look back over two decades and think, and you should, you should think that I had fun. I made great friendships. It was incredible experience. Um, mm -hmm. I think we're very fortunate, yeah, to have lived the lives we had. And, and I know one thing I used to really envy about you was when you, you traveled a lot with your family, particularly your dad, Roger. Yeah, 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 um, sure. Yeah. I remember, I think it was 2007 in St. Croix, when we traveled, my bike got damaged. In the I still travel. remember that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I, I think if it was not for your dad, I was not going to race. But he went into the room downstairs at Jackie and Joel's house where all the tools were. He made a special little part for my aero bars and he put everything back together. And yeah, I used to love to see Roger at the races. I remember he had his little bike in Hawaii that he would fold up in his luggage. Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, one of, for you, one of the fun things must be how you got to share your career with your dad. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And, and that's, that's um, I would say, in our sport, in triathlon, that's the, um, the beauty, the honesty of it, you know. It's, um, yeah, yeah it's, it's all in a small group. Everyone comes to races with his own environment, a couple of people around him. And that's it. It's different than when you look at uh, at soccer players, at uh, professional cyclists. It's it's a whole different world. So, yeah. and it's uh, it's a lot more um, humble, a lot more um, let's say amusement uh, around everything. No. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. It's yeah. it's certainly it's a professional sport, but without the hoopla and the the <laughs> razzmatazz of, yeah. of a lot of other professional sports. And yeah, exactly. One of that's one of the great things I think about our sport. Yeah, yeah, me too. That's what I think about it. And when you tell about that that little piece in uh, Saint Croix, he he made for you. That since then we call him MacGyver. No, it's not more. Yes, Roger, it's MacGyver. Yeah. That's right. That was his nickname, MacGyver, after the yeah. famous TV show where the guy could make anything. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if we still have to look into the questions. Yes or no? Or I don't see. Uh... I don't see if you can you see some questions popping up or I, I've seen a lot of questions, but they've they've just scrolled over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah. So not easy. I saw one, 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 one question was about, I think, Melbourne in 2012. Yeah. Um, so that was, ob stuff. yeah, obviously that was a race we did. Um, I think it was the first year they had regional championships. So exactly, yeah, yeah. Um, for a long time we had normal Ironman races and then world championships and nothing in between. Mm -hmm. um, I think in 2012 was the first year they had three regional championships. So they had the European championships, Asia Pacific and North American. And so you got very good fields at those races. And we, we raced, you were there, Aniko Lanos, Cameron Brown, Luke McKenzie, Joe Gambles, Greg Bennett. Um, it was a very, it was a very good field. And, and a very good race. I don't, I don't know about you. I liked racing in the big city, sort of. Most of our races are not in, in the city, so. No. Um, yeah, I liked, yeah, I liked that, uh, that marathon, point to point. You don't have many yeah. marathons point to point, but that was a good one. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was the only point to point, I think, marathon I ever did. And it was the same, um, the same course they used for the Melbourne Marathon. So, oh, yeah. Um, okay. yeah. And it was also... Uh, I think you could do. A, I'm pretty sure you could qualify for the Boston. You could qualify for Boston or New York with your time from that marathon because it was the the same course they used for Melbourne. But I'm yeah. just reading one of the questions now. It said, "What was the camber like in the first 10 kilometers in Melbourne?" Um, <laughs> you you remember the first actually it was like 20 kilometers. We were on that road and we were on the side. It was like a camber, so it was yeah, yeah. on an angle. Um, True. I didn't I, mind I, it so much. Yeah, I remember one thing that you came in the beginning of the running, you were like a couple of meters behind the group. Then you joined the group, the, the leading group. And I think we were still five or something. And after one hour, you, you shouted like, hey, guys, this is really too fast. We already have yeah. 10 miles in the first hour. Yeah. Yes, we, 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 were, we were going so, so I didn't, I never wore a watch. But yeah. I could feel it was hard. And you guys always had watches on and I could hear Nico's watch beeping. His Garmin was beeping and beeping and yeah. he was telling me the splits like at 5K, I think we were 17, just under 17 minutes. And I thought that can't be right. 
And then at 10 kilometres, we were 35 and, a, 35 and a little bit. And then the pace didn't really slow down and we got to 20 kilometres. And I think there were still four of us together, you, myself, yep. Cam and, and Anika. And I thought, this is crazy. We're on pace to run something like 224 marathon. Um, <laughs> and something had to explode. And it, we all, I think we all did it. Yes, we all did it at a different point. Yeah. I think you, you ran at 2.38 there, 2.37? 2.38, yeah, 2.37 or 2.38, yeah. It yeah. was a good run. It was yeah, yeah, one, yeah. Of my, one of my best runs, I think it was. Because uh, as you know, the second half of that marathon is not flat either. It's no, quite, no, a, no. quite a hilly course. Yeah. So, um, a little yeah, bit of shame. dunes, like, no? Dunes? Yeah, yes, yeah. 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 So, yeah, it's a real shame that race is not on anymore. Yeah, true, true. I see another question. What are your preferred Ironman race in the world and why? Uh, from a French, uh, French spectator. Go ahead. Your, perfect, uh, your uh, preferred race. Wow. Well, of course, for, for Ironman racing, I, I love Hawaii. I think it's just a beautiful race. A lot of history. I liked Melbourne as well. I thought Melbourne was, was a great race. Um, mm -hmm. How about you? I, no doubt you've got France as a fond memory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, people ask me a lot about that, the, your preferred race. And I, I will always say, like, Hawaii is the most important, of course. Um, the most beautiful, I, I do not agree, because I think France is really a, a beautiful yeah. one to, to race in. It's a, such a yeah. spectacular course. It's, a, it's amazing. And I'm, uh, I'm really happy that I found the race that suits me best, because um, if I look back on, to my career, it's true that, that in Nice... It always, or always, most of the times, uh, it, it comes through. So it, uh, it's a good race for me. But then, yeah, my first race, like New Zealand, Lake Taupo, yeah. that's, that's spectacular too. And uh, I've raced, yeah. uh, well, like you, in, in, in all the parts of, of the world almost. So uh, there's always something you can say about races. And uh, especially when Ironman puts things together, it's, it's always in, um, let's say, um, touristic places almost, like yeah. destina destinations you want to go to. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah how, many, how many times did you win France? Uh, five, yeah. Yeah, so you have so, obviously very good memories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I lost like three of them as well. So it's not like every time you, mm. you start, you win it. So you know, you know better than me, but uh, it's, it's, it's a good one. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, And the French... Um, let's say, um, I don't know if you raced a lot in France, but like the... I, I did two or, two or three seasons, yeah. Oh, yeah, like the ambience, like the atmosphere is yeah. really uh, something you only experience in France, yeah. It, it's beautiful. They love, their, they love their racing. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. So, yeah, I hope like now uh, Ironman France is uh, postponed. Date is not sure yet. So it will be, I guess, September or October. So I, I hope I can... Uh, End my career over there. I remember, uh, I think it was 2012, you came to Sydney to train. Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah, yeah. You I was staying with, with uh, Sylvain uh, from Compress Sports. Yeah. Yes, yeah, you were, and we did, we used to do some riding, we did some long rides together, and I remember you were doing France that year, mm -hmm. and the news had just come out that, for, uh, that Lance Armstrong was going to race. And you were telling me all about, yeah, because he, he owned a house on the course there. And yeah. um, I, th I think that was the race he was going to do to try and qualify for Kona. So Exactly, yeah. Obviously, history says that that didn't go <laughs> quite as planned for him. But, no, 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 um, no. no. <laughs> I was, in the end, you know, I was happy uh, it, it went that way because either way, if I would have won or he would have won with all the history afterwards, it would have been... You know, strange to talk about it or whatever. And I remember he only cancelled or he, he decided or they decided in his place to not start like 10 days, 10 days before the race or something. I remember. It was, was close. Yeah, it, was, it, was close yeah. it was in June. It was very late. Yeah. Just, just before the race. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. All right. You know, I have one question for you personally. Um, yeah. <laughs> maybe a hard one. I don't know. But I always think about it. Like in 2007, when, when we met, I was still, uh, I was only 28 or something. Didn't win big races that, so far. But um, at that point, like, how do you think about an athlete like me? Like afterwards, I was able to win Hawaii. But at that time, I didn't believe I could ever win Hawaii or uh, 
I would ever be capable of doing that. So uh, I was wondering at that point in 2007, how did you think about me, um, like in terms of uh, being able to win races, big races? Yeah, I don't I, know I if think... it's a hard question or not, but I well, wanted to Well, not ask really. You. I mean, I think the thing is you, obviously, you know, too, you, you can look back in hindsight and think, oh, I thought that guy might have made it, but he didn't. And this other guy... Yeah. I wasn't so sure about, but he's come in one big race. So you, you never know 100%, but mm -hmm. I remember you had uh, always a good mentality, a good mindset. And I think just I could see you had the support as well of your family. Mm -hmm. um, Roger was there and you had a passion and you were, each year you, could, you were improving a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. So obviously after we met uh, in St. Croix, I followed your career after that and I saw the, the very steady and consistent improvement um, mm -hmm. but just after chatting to you as well, when, you know, we stayed at that house for one week, when you spend a week with another athlete and you see how they prepare, how they think, some of the questions you were asking me, I was thinking, oh, he's, <laughs> you're asking all the, all the right questions, you know? Yeah. Um, so I'm not going to say that I hundred percent knew you would win in no, a no. way, but I thought this, this, this kid can have a very good career because I see a very strong motivation Mm -hmm. um, also a passion for the sport and you had all the extra things too, like the support of your family, um, good people um, to train with, good people who could help advise and coach you. Um, mm -hmm. So the ingredients were there and, um, and slowly but surely you started finishing higher up, a lot of top fives, podiums, and then I think mm -hmm. your first big victory was Abu Dhabi. Yeah, 2011, um, yeah. yeah which was a very a big win. All the best in the world were there. So I think at that point, you know, it was obvious to everyone that oh, Frederick can win big races. And, mm -hmm. and that's not to say that, I mean, obviously there's still a lot of people who can win big races, but I think not too many people come along and win and then are consistent for, for three or four or five years and keep showing mm -hmm. up with all the extra pressure and the extra expectation and all those extra things that come. Um, and you alluded to it before, you know, what's more fun, early career, later career, you know, it's very exciting as an athlete when you start winning, as you know, yeah, for sure, yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's very motivating, but it also comes with expectation and pressure too, because now you're expected to win. And, um, you know, sometimes early in your career, if you have a little niggling injury or if you get a mechanical, a flat tire, nobody really cares. Later on, it becomes a big deal if something happens. And, um, yeah. But, yeah, no, I, I think I could see straight away. I mean, and you, the thing, too, was you were very good in all three disciplines. So um, mm -hmm. you, were, you were consistent. All right, thanks. Sounds, sounds great <laughs> to hear that from you. No, and you're, uh, you're a, a different um, – uh, you're, you're good in the tree as well, but you have a really strong point in the end uh, in, in the run. And that's something I don't have, but like you say, I'm more consistent in, in the tree. So uh, you see that uh, every type of, uh, of triathlete, like nowadays, when you, when you look around, a lot of people ask me, what do you think about that guy? What do you think about that guy? But like you say in your answer, it's, it's a whole puzzle of, of different things. You have talents, but yeah. then you have the mentality, your yeah. people around you. So it's not that easy to just define how the, the next world champion or the next uh, big champion will, uh, will look like. It's, it's not easy to define now. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. Okay. Um, what else? Tell me. <laughs> um, what else? So your job, your job with the army. Yeah. What does that entail? You become the, the person responsible for training all the athletes in the army? No, not at all. In fact, um, now I think we are uh, 25 guys in the army, uh, boys and girls, who, um, who are in a particular sport on a high level. So there's uh, judo, there's swimmers, there's triathletes, there's uh, skiers, there's uh, yeah, plenty of different sports. So in fact, it's only um, like a manager to, to make sure that everything in the army is okay for them, uh, to make sure that every time they go to another country to do a race or whatever, uh, to follow up, to, to look for communication, all those sort of things. So, but every um, athlete has his own coach 
has his own yeah. federation and that's the the manager his his task like uh, to communicate with the coach with the federation with everything so but i think with with the experience uh, we have in at the yeah. highest level no matter what sport you're in it's it comes to the same thing so uh, i yeah i look forward to that because i can stay in the sport at the highest level in a different role but uh, i think it's a good opportunity yeah i think as you said when when you live through this sport and uh it teaches you a lot and i think a lot of the the skills and the lessons you learn transfer well uh into other mm-hmm. areas afterwards so yeah no doubt you'll be you'll be very good i think you'll yeah. be good <laughs> and for you uh, we we talk about this but for you with the coaching i think it's the same thing all all the things you learned over all those years when you coach people it's not just about making a, a training schedule there's a lot more about it than than just uh making the plan i would say yeah absolutely i think it's you've got to get to know the person what mm-hmm. their strengths and weaknesses are not only as an athlete but in their everyday life and with their mindset as well so uh it's certainly a skill i think a lot of people know the science and the physiology of training uh, mm-hmm. yeah for sure yeah but it's another thing to get the most out of different athletes who require different things physically emotionally um yeah And I think you know we're going through that now. I just saw one of the questions scroll along the bottom asking, you know, in these times now, uncertain times, how do you how do you reset goals, I guess, reshift your focus, how do you keep training and you know, I think that's a good question to ask. I think when you've set yourself some goals and you know, a lot of athletes have had goals that have been set for maybe 12 or 18 months or more. Um maybe an ironman race or a qualification race for for Kona or for 70.3 worlds and when the whole landscape shifts not only in sport but for the world i think it can be it can be disappointing it can be frustrating i think it can be unsettling um but i also think it's an opportunity i mean at the end of the day you cannot change what has happened it's no it's something that's it's bigger than us it's bigger than sport it's um but i always like to think that some of the good old sayings about keeping a positive attitude this is this is the time to really practice um you know it's it's easy to be positive it's easy to uh be in good form when when everything's going well the real challenge is when things are not going well how do you how do you keep your head in the game and i i think you know one thing i've said to some of the athletes i work with is I think it's okay to be frustrated and disappointed and maybe mm-hmm. even for two or three weeks or a month just almost grieve the race but at the end of the day it is it's still only sport and if you are healthy you have so uh so many things to to be grateful for and um you know in sport there's always another race we will come through the other end of this and there'll be other races um you know and I think the people who will prosper later this year or next year or or whenever it is are the ones who can just maybe be disappointed be frustrated and and get that out of their system but then just refocus and reset goals and think well maybe there's some opportunities as well maybe this is a good opportunity to work on a lot of those little technical deficiencies that you don't get a chance to focus on when you're doing hard training or trying to build fitness um and and there's there's a lot of ways to train obviously on the bike you can be on the indoor trainer same mm-hmm. with running yeah. treadmill um there's a lot of strength and conditioning you can do inside the four walls of of your own house so yeah, for sure. you don't you don't need much equipment um you know it's probably not going to look like a perfect schedule or something that you would normally do but you can always make the most of every situation and i think when you go through those situations the benefits of building up a strong mindset overweigh whatever the the disadvantages are in terms of the physical training right now so i just think people you just need to stay positive um maybe set a few more longer term goals and and really just enjoy being healthy and do the things you can do yeah. in the immediate future that uh will make you a better athlete and also make you a happier athlete just getting out the door sometimes there can be no structure Yeah. Um and just being able to move and exercise I think we're all lucky to be able to do that if if we can do it. 
yeah that's a good one yeah that's uh, exactly how you have to feel right now so uh, that's that's true and in the end you know it's always uh, i always think like control what you can control and in the end all the other things that are happening happening right now uh, we we cannot control so uh, in every different country there's different rules as well so here in belgium we yeah. are still we are still lucky we can go out on ourselves on on the bike and and we can run outdoors there's plenty of countries i don't know in australia but um like france spain italy they cannot come out of uh, of their houses so uh, yeah yeah so everybody's got different restrictions and yeah. i'm just reading a question now someone's saying in the current situation do you think it's good to pull back uh and not compromise the, your immune system yeah absolutely i think there's there's no point really pushing that top end fitness right now no your focus should be more about just maintenance um, little technical things and enjoyment. I think without structure, um, as you I, know, I, Frederick, when when you ahead. have good aerobic conditioning, you if you do some maintenance training, the the real top form comes back very quickly. Um, so long as you can maintain some, even just lower intensity aerobic conditioning. Yeah, exactly. I think if you if they will announce when the races will start again, then you will still have a couple of weeks to do some, like you say, a couple of sessions, and then. The, the form can go can come quickly and uh, in very my quickly. mind yeah very quickly in my mind I, I only have like uh, the thing is right now we have like a long winter here in Europe we add a couple of months and I, I you just have to continue winter training basic training endurance and and that's it and don't don't panic about that and we'll see when when the races come up then yeah absolutely that's that's good advice I mean yeah, I just I just like to keep things really simple, and you know yeah. what, people are doing it tough. Some people their health is compromised, and if if we're lucky enough to be healthy, yeah, I mean that's in itself that's enough to be really happy and grateful for, and just train for enjoyment and, and train for for mental health, and even basic maintenance training will serve you well right now. Yeah, yeah for sure. I'm, uh... I think that's the best thing because when you look around now on, on social media and even here uh, when I look around when I go outside, there's, there's, you can see like athletes who are doing it right and then athletes who panic and, and do uh, yeah. like uh, hard sessions and I, I don't know why they do the hard sessions right yeah. now but uh, it doesn't serve uh, for a lot I think. Yeah, yeah. I think sometimes people do train more for their head than for whatever yeah. the physical benefits may be. So, exactly, yeah. but yeah, now's the time to reevaluate all of that. Exactly. Yeah. And in the end, you know, there's no, not really a good or a, or a wrong thing. In the end, you have to do um, what you feel like is the good thing. And, uh, and my coach always tells me it's good to do the right training at the right time. And that's, uh, that's also something I, I focus on. So uh, the good training at the right time is, is a, is a key one to, to be in top shape when you need to be in top shape now. Well, your coach knows what he's talking about. He's a legend. Yeah. <laughs> You're a legend too, man. It's uh, oh, three times Hawaii. No, we were talking about it. So uh, three times Hawaii, it's when the pressure is on, you still manage to win another time and another time. So uh, I only won it once. And I, I, can, I can assure you, it's, it's, yeah, it's fun to deal with, but it's hard to deal with as well. Because these days, yeah. a, lot of, a lot of people talk about immunity these days. But I can tell you, 2014, the year after I, be, I won Hawaii, the whole year I had like different things, like a cough, like a, a little headache, yeah. something. Every time I came, up, I came up to a race, there was always something. And that was because I had contact with many people who wanted to talk to me, shake hands, uh, whatever, take a picture. So 2014 was a hard year for me in, in that way. And you can tell a lot more about that, I think. <laughs> Oh, I can't hear you anymore.
Craig, can you still hear me? Sorry. Can you still hear me? I can't hear you anymore. No? You can still hear me? Yeah. No. <laughs> yes, try again. No. <laughs> You know, that's the issue these days with um, all the, the online things. But I think we, we had a good time. We had 40 minutes. So um, I think it's about time to, uh, to close it. I'm really happy I could uh, talk to you, Craig. Thanks so much. And uh, thanks so much. And uh, we'll talk soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.